So now I will deal with the lateral view of the skull, normal lateralis. The bones forming the lateral view of the skull are the um, frontal bone, the parietal bone. Um, they are um, united by a suture here, which is the coronal suture. The other bone is the part of the sphenoid here, which is called the greater wing of the sphenoid, and part of the temporal bone. The mainly, uh, this part of the temporal bone is the squamous part of the temporal bone that can be seen in the lateral view of the uh, skull. And these bones, the squamous part of the temporal bone, the greater wing of the sphenoid, part of the frontal and parietal bones, they form uh, what is called as the temporal fossa. This is the region of the temporal fossa, and the temporal fossa provides for the attachment of a muscle, which is the temporalis muscle, one of the muscles of mastication, and as well as its fascia, uh, that is a very thick temporal fascia. We can see here that um, the, at this suture, which is located between the frontal bone and the zygomatic bone, the uh, frontozygomatic suture. If we follow the frontozygomatic suture and the posterior edge of the frontal bone, we can see that there is a line in the bone, and this line, uh, it diverges, although it's not very clear, but the beginning of the line is clear, and then the line will diverge into two lines. This is the inferior temporal line, which con passes downwards and then forwards to continue with the superior border, of the zygomatic arch. So this is the inferior temporal line, and the inferior temporal line marks the area for the attachment of temporalis muscle. The other line is called the superior temporal line, goes a little bit higher, and then goes downwards and backwards and continues with the mastoid process. And so this is called the superior temporal line. Uh, the superior temporal line provides attachment for the temporalis fascia. Evidently, temporalis fascia is superficial to temporalis muscle and should be attached to a part of the skull that is a little bit superior to the inferior temporal line which provides for the attachment of the muscle fibers themselves. So this is the uh, trace of the inferior temporal line and this is the trace of the superior temporal line. The um, temporal bone, uh, which we can see several parts of the temporal bone here. We can see the um, squamous part of the temporal bone. Squamous means flat, so this is the flat part of the temporal bone. And the squamous part of the temporal bone has a process, which is called the zygomatic process. In addition, we can see another part of the temporal bone here. This is the tympanic plate, and we can see the styloid process. Another process can be seen here, which is called the mastoid process. And the mastoid process is actually, it is a downward prolongation of another part of the temporal bone, which is called the petrous part of the temporal bone. So the petrous part of the temporal bone cannot be seen from the lateral view of the skull, but we can see the petrous part of the temporal bone at the base of the skull. Here, this is part of the petrous temporal bone. And from the inside of the skull, inside the cranial cavity, so this is part, this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. It's a very hard part of the temporal bone. Uh, petrous and means rock, rock-like, so it's a very hard and uh, thick part of the temporal bone, the petrous part of the temporal bone. It has, on the lateral side of the skull, it has a downward growth, which is the mastoid process. Okay, mastoid is named mastoid because it looks like a breast, and so it's the mastoid process. The mastoid process can be palpated, actually, behind the earlobe. It's a palpable surface anatomical uh, landmark behind the earlobe. So, the temporal bone, actually the temporal bone is called the temporal bone from the word tempus. Tempus means time, and it's supposed to be derived from the fact that uh, this is the region where uh, time first grazes the hair. That's why it is called the temporal bone. And the region superficial to it is called the temporal region. The temporal bone is in fact formed of four parts. The squamous part of the temporal bone, uh, 
that has a process, which is called the zygomatic process. It has the styloid process, the second part. The third part is the tympanic plate. And the fourth part is the petrous part of the temporal bone, which uh, with its downward prolongation that is seen on the lateral side of the skull, which is called the mastoid process. So this region is sometimes called the petromastoid part. So the petromastoid part, the styloid part, the tympanic plate, and the squamous flat part of the temporal bone. The styloid process is variable in length and uh, provides for the attachment of muscles and uh, ligament. The tympanic plate is a U-shaped plate that forms the boundaries, anterior and posterior boundaries of the external auditory meatus. The zygomatic process of the temporal bone, as we can see it here, it articulates at a suture with another bone of the skull, which we can see here. This is the zygomatic bone, the bone of the cheek. This is the zygomatic bone. And the zygomatic bone also has a process, a frontal process, that articulates with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone at the uh, frontozygomatic suture, which has been just mentioned. Now, again, I repeat that the zygomatic process of the temporal bone articulates with the zygomatic bone, and together with the zygomatic process of the maxilla, this is the maxilla here, um, these processes with the zygomatic bone, they form an arch, as you can see. This is the arch. It's called the zygomatic arch. So this is the zygomatic arch formed. It's a bony arch that's formed by the zygomatic process of the maxilla, zygomatic bone, and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Sometimes the word zygoma uh, is used to replace the zygomatic arch, but in fact the zygoma uh, should be restricted in use to the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Here, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone uh, is related to the um, superficial temporal artery. At this point, in front of the external auditory meatus, in the front of the uh, auricle, in front of the tragus of the ear, it is related to the superficial temporal artery and here where the superficial temporal artery can be pressed against the bone and the pulsations of the artery can be felt, the superficial temporal artery. The superficial temporal artery also gives a deeper branch that passes deep to the uh, temporalis muscle. Temporalis muscle occupies this fossa here and the artery passes superficial to temporalis but it gives a branch that passes deep to temporalis and sometimes it grooves the bone here. This is called the middle temporal artery. So you can see here that there is a faint groove for the middle temporal artery. In front of the external auditory meatus there is a depression here, and this depression is called the um, glenoid fossa. The glenoid fossa uh, provides for the articulation with the head of the mandible. And so this glenoid fossa is part of the temporal bone. That's why the joint is called the temporomandibular joint. Here again, you can see the bones of the lateral view of the skull frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, greater wing of the sphenoid. And uh, this is the zygomatic process. And here is the fossa, the glenoid fossa, which articulates with the head of the mandible. It is part of the temporal bone, and the joint is the temporomandibular joint. Note the close relationship of the temporomandibular joint to the external acoustic meatus. This is, again, to show you the glenoid fossa. And in front of the glenoid fossa, there is an eminence, which is called the articular eminence or eminentia articularis. Now, this point here is the meeting place of the parietal bone, occipital bone, and the temporal bone. This is the uh, temporoparietal suture, and this is the lambdoid suture. So the meeting place or, uh, here is called the Asterion. This is the point which is called the asterion. We have another uh, meeting place of bones here, 
and uh, actually the arrangement at this region, which is called the Tyrion, is looks like an capital H shape arrangement. This is where the frontal, uh, parietal, temporal, and the greater wing of the sphenoid meet together. We have um, a capital H shaped arrangement, and this region here is called the Tyrion. This the region of the Tyrion is very important from the clinical point of view, and it is located, uh, actually it's located about a two finger breadth above the uh, midpoint of the zygomatic arch, and about uh, uh, oh, uh, three centimeter or a thumb breadth from the posterior margin of the frontal process of the zygomatic arch. So um, about three centimeter uh, behind the frontal process of the zygomatic arch and about four centimeter above the midpoint of the uh, zygomatic arch is the region of the uh, tyrion. Uh, here at the tyrion, the bone of the skull is thin. And not only the bone is thin, but it is also um, closely related to the frontal branch of the middle meningeal artery. That's why fractures are common when there is a lateral hit on the skull, and these fractures might involve or injure um, the, the middle meningeal artery, the frontal branch or the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery, resulting in intracranial hemorrhage, an extradural hematoma. If we look at the inside of the skull, uh, we can see here the grooves which are made by uh, arterial branches. Here we have some of the grooves here, and this is another groove here. These are meningeal arteries. To remind you, these meningeal arteries, they not only supply the meninges, but they supply the bones of the skull as well with blood. These are branches of the middle meningeal artery. The middle meningeal artery is a branch of the maxillary artery and it passes through this foramen. This is the uh, foramen spinosum. Um, passes through this foramen and enters into the middle cranial fossa. Now this is the middle cranial fossa here. Here again you can see the middle cranial fossa. This is foramen ovale and behind it is foramen spinosum. So the middle meningeal artery passes into the skull through foramen spinosum. We can see the groove of the middle meningeal artery itself here on the um, uh, temporal bone. And the middle meningeal artery will soon divide into two branches, an anterior or frontal branch and a posterior or parietal branch. The frontal branch of the middle meningeal artery goes on the lateral side of the middle cranial fossa and it deeply grooves and even here it tunnelizes the bone. There is a tunnel here. See that the groove is not clear because there is a tunnel deep to the bone um, and this point here is actually uh, exactly opposite to the region of the tyrion. So that's why the artery is so close at this position and uh, can be injured by the fracture of the bone. And here is the continuation of the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery. We can see the grooves on the inside of the skull. This is again to emphasize the region of the tyrion. Um, you can see the edge-shaped arrangement of the suture, and this is the region of the tyrion. Uh, sometimes you may find um, a sutural bone, this is the zygomatic bone, the bone of the cheek. It has a process that articulates with the temporal bone, zygomatic process of the temporal bone, a process, a frontal process that articulates with the zygomatic process of the uh, uh, frontal bone, and another process, maxillary process, that articulates with a zygomatic process of the maxilla. And uh, here you can see a foramen. Uh, this is called the zygomatico-facial foramen. And from the inside, although it is not clear in this uh, uh, specimen, there is another foramen which is called the zygomatico-temporal. So zygomatico-temporal and zygomatico-facial uh, 
uh, foramina, and these foramina, they transmit nerves and uh, vessels of the same name. The nerves are branches of the maxillary nerve. 